this afternoon we will uh, have some demonstrations and we will show you the demonstrations we also um, do for the farmers. So now you will see how we teach or train farmers how to do things um, on a correct, uh, in a correct way. And from the questionnaires we uh, had with the farmers, uh, we could uh, establish that we had two critical points within the handling of pesticides. Uh, and this is the filling of the sprayer and afterwards the cleaning of the sprayer. So first we will uh, demonstrate why it's important to use an induction hopper and how we should use uh, and fill our uh, sprayer. So why is an induction hopper a useful thing? First of all, it avoids any spills of your product. So it's not only good for the environment, but also good for your wallet. Because uh, everything that is spoiled, you cannot use anymore. Um, but what is also important for an induction hopper, that is that we uh, also can rinse our um, packages uh, afterwards. So it's not a real product. We just uh, used uh, something that has a real light nice yellow color. It's a vitamin B12, so it's not uh, toxic, so we can uh, use it very safe. So now he's rinsing the, the container. He spills when you are filling that the spills are still very concentrated. So it's not diluted, it's a very concentrated product. So now, Guido is actually ready to start. Uh, okay, so you can also, uh, you can now go over there and Hido, he will now start spraying and you will see now the influence of drift. So we have two different uh, nozzles. We have a flat fan nozzle, which is used uh, by a lot of sprays. It's not drift reducing, but air injection, uh, which is drift reducing. So you will now see, uh, the you can go uh, further, now you will see uh, the influence of the wind okay. and drift. This is a uh, water sensitive paper, so uh, when uh, water or something else comes on it, it uh, turns into blue. So uh, I put two little ones uh, beneath the uh, sprayer boom. So uh, okay. this is from uh, the air induction nozzle, so you can see much bigger droplets than this one. This is the flat fan. So what to do the further? I put uh, five of these near the field. So it, this is from two meters uh, further than the sprayer boom. So this is four meters, six meters, and then eight and ten meters. So I think it was uh, clear to see the difference so between the two. Uh, Two types. Just to mention that um, of course reducing and avoiding drift is not only important for our surface water but you can imagine that if you're spraying potatoes here and something another crop is uh, right uh, right across uh, your field that uh, of course uh, the other crop can also be treated with uh, what with what it should not be treated. So in a sprayer there's also there are always an amount of uh, solution that is left uh, into the bottom of the tank, into the pumps, um, into the tubes, um, into the boom, into the nozzles. <laughs> so this is the amount that is left after air is coming out of the nozzles. So the sprayer, the spray tank, is completely empty. According to Hido's computer, according to Hido's um, knowledge, he says, I'm uh, blowing air out of the nozzles, so my uh, sprayer is empty. But so you can see now, if a farmer, he does not clean very well, or he says, uh, there's nothing left in my sprayer, and I will just um, put out, uh, uh, open the tank, the amount that is left still in the, in the sprayer. So this is 30, 35 liters, you guess? Mm -hmm. um, so this is still highly concentrated product that is still in the sprayer. So it's uh, very important that you uh, take care of this amount of solution. So we use this, um, this demonstration uh, sprayer to show the farmers um, how um, necessary it is to clean in a, and rinse in a correct way. So therefore, we have the triple rinse method. And this means that the amount of clean water that is in our clean water tank, we will divide it in three steps. And we will put the, this water, this clean water, in, in three steps into the spraying tank. So now we will demonstrate to you why it's so important 
to use this triple rinse method. And you will see that the color, that is also uh, a yellow color, that the color has diminished um, very well. And so we have a concentration of 1 to 100 that is uh, still in uh, the spray. So after that, we say that if you have rinsed and cleaned in a correct way and you still have a concentration left of 1 to 100, the dilution factor from 1 to 100 is reached, that you can open uh, your sprayer and you can um, let the residual volume in the field. <laughs> also show um, what they should do if they are not able to leave everything out in the field. So there is still another solution that we can offer them. Within the TOPS project we developed a continuous cleaning method and the advantage of our uh, TOPS cleaning method is that we first of all we uh, save a lot of time. Uh, you will see that immediately um, how much time you save with um, this uh, continuous cleaning system and uh, also we need uh, less water. So now we already have a clear water, so you can see that um, it goes uh, very quickly um, and that we still have the half a tank left and uh, so you can use it uh, to um, clean your um, sprayer from the outside uh, or to clean your hands. We are standing on the Hido's uh, filling and cleaning uh, place. So uh, the place where you are standing is his uh, cleaning place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, here is, there's a, you you can see it afterwards. There's a T tube. So he is able to change um, the collection of the water. So uh, in that way that he is cleaning also here his tractor or other machines. And so if he is cleaning his sprayer, he can direct the tube uh, to this storage tank. So in this storage tank, all the water is collected that is contaminated with uh, pesticides, with rest of pesticides. So this is all collected into here. Otherwise, this changes the tube and all the raining water and all the other cleaning water is um, separately collected into these tanks. This system here is called a, a, a biofilter. So we have three boxes um, over here that are filled with uh, organic material. So what is the principle of a bioderemediation system? This, or the system, we call it uh, like that. Um, the principle is that we actually bring the field onto our farm. So in the beginning, I told you that um, it was better to leave things behind in the field, that they were degraded in a biological way, than to bring them back on your farm. So what we will do now, we will bring our field back to our farm, because in these boxes, in the three boxes, we have the microorganisms, the same as in the field, <coughs> which will break down our active ingredients in a biological way. So this is actually the principle of a bioremediation system. For us, uh, these boxes are uh, also a very good uh, way to see if our system works. Because if we see here that the plants do not survive, then we know that our system does not work and that our active ingredient is not uh, broken down like it should be.